a good job in the city Working for the man every night and day And I never lost a minute of sleeping Worrying about the way things might have been The wheels keep on turning Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the Credence Clearwater Revival all-time classic, which is Proud Mary. Really good fun, this one, to play. Really interesting little kind of intro chord sequence. It sounds a little bit tricky. Actually, it's not that hard if you take it nice and slowly, although there's a couple of fast chord changes. A really nice groove for the verses. Definitely worth working on. And I'm going to show you a couple of little twiddles that you can add in there as well. So, as usual, we start by keeping things really simple. So we're just going to leave off the intro to start off with, because it's a little bit more complicated. We're just going to start off looking at the verse and, you know, some basic strumming patterns and stuff. So, the verse, very, very simple, really. It's eight bars of D, uh, two bars of A or A7, and then two bars of B minor. So, I know beginner, you know, I put this in the beginner series and it's got a B minor in it. Now, B minor is not a difficult bar chord, really. Uh, most beginners, if, you can, if you've already tackled your power chords, uh, then you shouldn't have too many problems with a B minor chord. So it's a, quite a nice chord to, to play. So starting at the beginning of verse 1, we've got a D chord for 8 bars, okay? So it'll be 4 down strums per bar, remember? And I'm going to sing the words along with you as well. So get your D chord ready. So 3, 4... Left a good job in the second bar, two, three, four. Working on the man every day's the fourth bar. Fifth, I never lost a sixth of sleeping. Seven bars away, things eight bars there into A7. Big wheels keep on turning. That's the second bar, then to B minor. Proud Mary keeps on burning. Then back to D for the chorus. Rolling, rolling. There's the second bar, here's the third bar. Rolling on a river, and then a fourth bar. And that's it. Okay, so the verses and the chorus is very, very simple. So the verses again, Eight bars of D, two bars of A7, two bars of B minor, and then four bars of D chord for the chorus. You're not really going to get much simpler than that. That's a, you know, as, as, as easy as it's going to get. Now, so the strumming pattern in this song is really, really cool, and you're going to be able to use it in loads of other songs, but as soon as you hear this particular strumming pattern on a D chord, lots of people are going to think Proud Mary. It really is synonymous with this particular tune. It's very, very cool. Uh, it's, it's relatively easy. We're just going to be playing down and up strumming on one and two and three and four and, but on beats two and four, we're going to touch the strings with the outside part of our palm there. It's, it's kind of like a down strum motion, we'll talk about that more in a second, but it's really important that that comes on beats two and four. So really slowly we're going to be going down, up, mute, up, down, up, mute, up, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four and really want to work on that a little bit first of all just think of it as up down up mute up down up mute one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Okay, so it's really important that you know where one is as well, because it's easy to think of it just as like up, down, up, up, down, up, and then you're kind of losing where one is, and that's very, very important. So the rhythm pattern will be written out on the website for you as well, so make sure you kind of can help to look at it. You know, I think if you're looking at those kind of rhythm patterns, it can help solidify it, okay? Really, really big deal. Any of those sort of patterns, when you're learning them, really good ideas to mute all the strings with, the, with your fingers and just practice going... Okay? Just having up, down, up, up, down, up, up, one and two, and three and four, and one and two, and three and four, and... Okay? When you feel confident with that, go back to putting it onto the chords. You hear 
just got it straight away with this song. Sounds like it. Now what you're probably going to find as you practice it, that it becomes a little bit more of a hit than a mute. But you want to try and think of it like it's a mute, but you're likely to get a little bit of a percussive hit on, on that. And it's fine. It doesn't have to be like dead silence. But you can hear what a huge difference it makes if I, take, if I add the mute back into to playing a note and just go... Now I'll put it back in. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Take it out. One and two and three and four and one and two. It's just so boring. Part of it is, is learning the pattern and then trying to let it loosen up a bit, especially for a song like this. It doesn't have to be that rigid, you know, sometimes a, a note might ring out a little bit longer and it, it's kind of okay, it's, it's got to feel nice. That's one of those really important things for beginners to kind of get, get into is it's not just about the maths, it's about making the songs feel good. You know, that's a really important thing, it's, especially a song like this, it's kind of a little bit lazy if you try and play along with it. It's got to feel loose and relaxed. If, you, if you're too uptight and concentrating too much and too tense. I'll never really quite have the right vibe. It's got to feel like loose and comfortable, okay? So once you're confident with the rhythm, you want to then stick it onto your verses and the choruses, what I'd recommend. So just... Left a good job in the city Working for the man every night and day And I never lost a minute of sleep and Worrying about the way things might have been to A7 Big wheels keep on turning Brown Mary keeps on burning Rolling, rolling Now sometimes, especially at the end of the B minor, maybe the last part of the D before going to A7 You might want to leave out the mute and it'll give the creation of a kind of a little, like it's building up, almost like a drum would do a drum fill Okay, so it's just a slight change in the rhythm that kind of makes the listener think, oh, there's something new coming. It might just be a chord change, or it could be like coming into the chorus or whatever. I just really felt it then uh, going into the, the chorus part from the B minor. I really wanted to keep strumming at that point, you know. So you're allowed to, you know, let yourself feel it as well. Listen to the original recording, and you'll probably notice some stuff like that. And, you know, it, it can be a good idea to try and listen that closely to the, the great masters playing like Credence. And, and they've got such incredible groove as well, you know. There's a lot to learn by really close listening. So really close listening and playing along I should add as well because the playing along and trying to imagine you're in the band can be really helpful as well. So so let's move on to the intro now. It's not particularly difficult, but it's got a couple of quirks that a lot of beginners kind of find a little bit sticky. But the second two bars normally, the first little bit's not too bad. So what we're going for here is we're starting off with a C chord and we're going to have down, up, mute. We've got the same little mute thing that we had going on before, okay? So down, up, mute, then changing to an A chord, and we're going to have up, up, down, up on the A, okay? So that's the pattern. Let me go again. C, one, and two, and three, and four, and, okay? Down, up, mute, up, miss, up, down, up. The miss on beat three is also very important. Down, up, mute, up, miss, up, down, up, C, mute, A, up, down, up, down, up, mute, up, up, down, up, down, up, mute, up, up, down, up, down, up, mute, up. Here straight away. Now it's, it's going to do that twice. So <laughs> okay, that's where it gets a little bit. Uh, that's not difficult. Don't be scared of it. You're just going to have to think about it a little bit. If you've got my songbook there, you can see the whole rhythm pattern written out for you, and it definitely makes it a lot easier to see these kind of things. So it starts the same on the C chord. We've got down, up, mute, A. Mute, G, mute, F. Okay, that's just the third bar. So there's quite a few chords going on there again. So let me take it nice and slowly. C chord, down, up, mute, change to A, up stroke, mute, change to G, up stroke, mute, 
change to F, up stroke. Okay? One and two and three and four and one, two, three. That bar again. So C, A, G, F, two, three, four, and again. C, A, G, F, two, three, four. Down, up, 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 up. Okay, now moving into bar four. We've got another upstroke, so we're not actually playing on beat one, which throws a lot of people off. We're going to have up, down, up, down on the F. Then we've got a D chord for a down on beat four. So let me take it now back from the beginning of bar three, because it's difficult to do that fourth bar on its own. I'm going to do the count, and I'm going to do it really slowly, so hopefully you can get it down. If you haven't got the songbook, really good idea is to write this down on a piece of paper in front of you. These kind of rhythms, once you write them down and you know what it is, it's a hell of a lot easier to play it. So, on the C, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one. And then we're into the rhythm. Okay, so the D chord, a lot of people get thrown off by that. It's just a strum on the D chord on beat four, and then on beat one, we start the chord progression for the verses. Okay, so it doesn't like start the chord progression on that beat four and we're losing a beat or anything. It's just a D strum on beat four, then the verses start. Okay, let's go through that section again from bar three. So three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one, two, and then the verses are in. Okay, so the whole intro now, so nice and slow. Two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three. Very cool, isn't it? Let's go to a quick close-up as well to make sure that you can see how to do all of those chord changes. So a few tips of the chords for you. First of all, if you're playing the A the way that I teach it on my beginner's course, using the second finger on the fourth string, you can see that you don't actually have to move it between the C and the A chord, okay? It's not a particularly difficult change that way. I sometimes find that my second finger lifts up a little bit even though I'm using that grip, but that's fine too, so don't stress about it if the second uh, finger wants to lift up. So C, a, C, A, C, A, G, F, 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 D, down, then we're into the verses. Again, the same thing, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two and three and four and one. Now while we're in the close-up, I also want to show you this really, really nice little lick that you can use for the end of the chorus. Okay, so we're just using the third finger in the fifth fret of the fourth string, and little finger on the fifth fret of the second string. Okay, now it's really important that you, I've got the rest of the fingers all kind of muting, so if I strum all of the strings, just those two notes end up ringing out. Okay, so we're sliding them up from the 5th fret to the 7th fret. Then moving them back to where we started. Then 1st finger in the 3rd fret of the 2nd string, 2nd finger in the 4th fret of the 4th string. Then back on with 3rd and 4th fingers, and then lift them off. Okay. That's the little riff that you'll hear there. Really, really nice little movement. It's actually the same sort of thing that happens in the on the original recording on the B minor. Okay, so uh, uh, big wheels keep on turning. There's your A7. B minor, C, D, thunder. It's these open D string and B string first. Then that grip with the first and third, uh, second fingers. Then third and fourth fingers in the fifth fret. Slide back. Keep on turning, proud Mary keeps on burning. Rolling, rolling, rolling on the river.
This really is an all time classic tune and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Do remember to play along with the original recording. It's a big deal. Really, really good fun. Really help you develop your time feel. Means that you can't kind of stop and start and make you kind of force you into getting your chord changes fast enough. You know, playing along with the original recordings is a really, really fine idea. So please subscribe to my channel if you dig what I do and you're going to find over a thousand more lessons all completely free over on my website, justinguitar.com. You take care of yourselves and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.